One of the passages that we often chant together is, I will grow different, separate from all that is dear and appealing to me. It's a reflection on separation, inconstancy. But it's also not just inconstancy outside, but it's also inconstancy inside. Notice it starts, I will grow different. This is something we have to watch out for. The mind is so changeable. When things that we've been dependent on, things that we're attached to, suddenly stop, conditions change. How much are we going to change? Do we have that stability inside that we need that even when things start falling apart outside or inside, our virtue doesn't fall apart, concentration, discernment, the things that are really important stay solid. In the beginning, we have to go on conviction. That what the Buddha said is, is true, that if you lose your wealth, you lose your health, even when you lose your relatives, is not that serious a loss. The serious loss is when you lose your virtue, you lose your right view. Because the things of the world, the people of the world, are all subject to aging, illness, and death. There's a passage where King Basanity has come to see the Buddha. And as he's talking with the Buddha, one of his men comes up and whispers in his ear that Queen Malika has died. Now, queen Malika was his favorite queen. He breaks down and cries. And the Buddha's first comment is, when has it ever been that something that was born would not grow age, ill, and die? The fact that it's universal is actually comforting. It's not just your individual pain, your individual loss. Everybody suffers this. He says you express your grief to whatever extent you find is useful, but then you realize you've got to get on with your life. There's work to be done, both outside and especially inside. Because as long as there's grief, it can very easily cause you to do things that would go against the precepts, or you might even change your views. But if you have something solid inside, then you're more resistant. And that solidity, as I said, starts with conviction that what the Buddha said is true. Our only real possessions are our actions. So we have to be very careful of those. And right view is what reminds us that our actions are, are important, and virtue is what gives us some guidance as to what is skillful and what's not. The precepts are there as shortcut guides, quick notes in the mind. No killing, no stealing, no illicit sex, no lying, no intoxicants, ever. Because when the mind is overcome by emotion, it's very easy to forget. And if the precepts were complicated, with lots of exceptions, the mind would certainly find a way to make it take advantage of those exceptions. It's when you're in shock over something, that you need something as quick and short to remind you, okay, no matter what, you're not going to do X. But just having conviction is not enough. We've got to work. And it's interesting that those two qualities the Buddha said are most important to protect your virtue and your, and your right view. These are also the qualities, he said, that form the basis for right mindfulness. And right mindfulness, of course, is a series of instructions on how you get the mind into right concentration. You need something inside that's solid, so you're not tempted to give up on your virtue, give up on your right view, when things outside suddenly change, and your conditions are a lot less comfortable than they are now. So we work on the concentration, work on getting the mind to settle in. 
We've got to be friends with our breath. Because this friendship is something that can outlast all the other friendships outside. If you have trouble being friends with your breath, you've got to ask why. What is it about the breath that you find so hard to stay with? Sometimes there are a lot of associations we have inside the body. There's a pain from this and a memory from that that seem to be buried in the energy body that we're working with with the breath. This is where you have to use some analogies to help. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha gives so many analogies. That there are perceptions that he provides for you so you can start shaping your mind in a new way. He says, make your mind like earth. People throw nice things on the earth, people throw disgusting things on the earth, but the earth doesn't react. Hold that image in mind and remind yourself that whatever comes your way, you can stand. Aging comes, you can stand it. Illness comes, you can stand it. Even when death comes, the Buddha says, you can stand it. You're going to be losing all kinds of things. But if you remind yourself there's an awareness in here that is going to keep going, it's not going to be destroyed. And the more solid it is, the more confident it is, the more likely it is to go to a good place. So that perception helps helps you stick with that conviction. And that conviction is what makes it easier and easier to get the mind into concentration. Because you can develop that quality of being solid in the mind. Then whatever comes up as you work through energy knots in the body, you're not going to be knocked, knocked around by it. So this principle of trying to make sure that you don't change for the worse when outside conditions isn't change. It also means there has to be a part of the mind that doesn't change when inside conditions change or start revealing themselves. So you begin to realize that the changes outside are not nearly as worrisome as the changes inside. This change inside, then when you, when the mind suddenly changes direction, gives up on the practice. That's the biggest thing to fear. That's the kind of change you got to watch out for. Some people say that the Buddha teaches us to embrace change, and well, that's not the case. Some changes are good. You change for the better. That's certainly fine. But you want to have something inside the mind that doesn't change in the face of everything else. And this is what we're working on as we practice. So look for that something inside. It's going to be very close to the breath, which is one of the reasons why you want to work with the breath as much as you can. And if you have trouble working with the breath, try to develop qualities in the mind through other meditation topics that will give you some of that solidity. Think of all those topics that the Buddha talked to Rahula, the one, one of them being reflect on keeping your mind like earth. Others include the Brahma Viharas, spreading goodwill for all the people who've harmed you, spreading goodwill for all the people you've harmed, spreading goodwill for yourself. Reflecting on impermanence, inconstancy of things, reflecting on not self, all the things out there that are beyond your control. So, so as the mind begins to accept these truths and develop some greater solidity inside, and also when other issues come up to distract you, you have quick ways of dealing with them. The face of someone who's harmed you comes up in the meditation, we spread goodwill. Try to make it quick so you can get back to the breath quickly. The thought of someone you, you've lost or some something that you've lost, reflect on impermanence and inconstancy. 
these things are all made to be lost. Think of a John, a John Child's example. He says, think of the cup as already broken. That doesn't mean that you treat it casually. You actually take very good care of it. But part of the mind has to be prepared. Someday it's going to be broken. The Buddha compares people to pots. Is all pots get broken eventually, whether it takes a long time or a short time. They're all heading to be broken. The world is broken. It's never going to be perfect. If you can accept that, then you can live with it and do what you can to make it a little bit better. But particularly do what you can to make yourself better, make yourself more reliable. So the changes of the world don't lead to changes inside, at least, at least not the change of anything good inside. When you can maintain this kind of solidity, then change doesn't hold any fear. Loss doesn't hold any fear. Because you've already gathered the good things inside. <laughs>